So, Kaiser Blue, Nickroid, Two Faces, we are pretty familiar Three, with at this point. Two, Kaiser Blue being a Falco one, Bayonetta, Nickroid is ch staying almost always on the snake, sometimes switching over to Bowser. I think this is. Yeah, being primarily a snake player yeah. is what I've seen of him. I definitely think it's fair to say that this is both their names. Definitely, it's what I've seen the most of both of them. Right. Alright, and these two players actually know each other a decent amount. So, I don't think I don't think we've ever seen them play it out in the ladder yet, so it's actually nice to see it finally happen. I I don't think I've seen them play. I know we've seen yeah. Falco Snake before, because I've seen a lot of Falco just down being a grenade, yeah, and then nothing exist. happens. Alright, guy's actually doing pretty well for himself though. Oh, mostly. I feel like early, like, right when the game starts, if Snake isn't just going crazy with stuff, it's kind of going to be a slow game. Right. Because it kind of sets the pace of what he's going to do. Yeah. And, like, we've seen Nick on stream plenty of times, both in the ladder and in top 8, top 12. Depends what we run for the week. That was actually a good, yeah, very good kill. Bro. But Yeah, that was a, it was a smart up air to call out oh. any kind of attack. There was also a smart back air back, yeah. to call out yeah. his uh, recovery that he did. It kind of a weird place on it. Yeah. So... We've seen we've seen Nick Wright plenty of times, and we kind of like to have an idea as to how he plays. Like he's a little bit more of a slow, methodical player who will really cover the screen and basically everything that Snake has, and then some. And he doesn't mind going to time. Nothing wrong with that if he gets the win. Why not? So this is actually a little bit of a faster-paced game compared to what we're normally seeing from him, and it's. I think it's because Kaiser's kind of setting the pace. He's not really letting him just kind of sit back and do stuff. He's always trying to get in. Yeah, the reflective play is definitely stopping a lot of it. Also, I think just the nature of Falco is you either like camp hard with lasers, which is just not for everyone, um, or you go in and just go crazy. Yeah. And so I think Kaiser's trying to like get in and go crazy. Right. It's just not always working because of things like Grenade, who kind of, you know, ruined that combo yeah. right there and there. It's like, it's... But not quite... Oh my god, that was actually a great That's smart. He, I think he just knows that he get up attacks out of that. Yeah. So, they're almost polar opposites, right? Because Nick wants to stand back and do his thing, you know, stop everything, and then, like, go in when he's comfortable in your force of shield. Name an explosive. Whereas Kaiser Blue, no, he just wants to be in your face. I, th I think just the nature of Fox is that he wants to get in your face because he has a great combo game. Right. Alright, good call out on the down air. That's not going to hit, so you can just take these feet. Yeah, Snake's down air has a decent hitbox. I it goes down pretty far. I don't know how wide it is, though. It's like, it's one of those weird hitboxes like uh, Fox Barry that kind of like floats you in place. So it kind of plays his out act, too. His actually like floats. Yeah. Like it's an actual float practically. Yeah. And it like, it's really good when it connects or even if it's on the shield. But like, if it's just whiffing, it's not the best thing because that's just extra and like you're taking for nothing. Alright, 10 for 10. Yeah, his, his downer has a, a deep size hitbox. It's not the widest thing in the world, but it's it's not uh, Zelda's down air hitbox for the sweet spot, which I think is like the smallest spike hitbox in the game. Well, say what you about that hitbox. Even that sour spot is enough to kill a lot of different characters at many different Oh, spots. yeah, the sour spot is the, it's a good sour spot, but the sweet spot itself, also, that was a good uh, yeah. read on the roll. He is it was kind of a 50-50, but I think he knew Kaiser wasn't going to go for the get-up attack again. Yeah, after last time, there's no reason not yeah. he would ever want to do that. Right. Nick immediately going into the side for a stage switch, I'm assuming. Most likely, I think he realized he was like, oh, I hated doing that on that stage. <laughs> Maybe he just wants to change in scenery, you never know. Alright, Smashville. Go! I don't know if I agree with it, but 
I'm not the one on the stage, right? Yeah, I always do the same thing. I'm like, I don't know about this one, but I'm not the one playing. Right. It could just be a comfort pick. Here's a little bit of a smaller stage, so Falco has less distance to slowly run on. Which I feel like was a problem for me. It was like just comfort picks rather than smart right. picks. Like, I would never go to Kalos, but apparently that's a great stage for Peach, even though I hate it. But like, I don't hate it, though, but... Yeah. The issue here, though, is that Snake can just cover, like, so much of the stage with his projectiles. He put, he put C4 in that middle platform, oh, and, and then all of a sudden everywhere. he has a wall. Right. He also has an up tilt. He also has a stock lead. Up tilt is a move, as I was talking about with the last set. <laughs> Yeah, that middle platform gives him a great right. space to stay on, because since it's just the one platform, Kaiser isn't able to go on like a separate parallel right. platform and then do something from there. Like, he has to go next to Nick. And, like that's the stress of trying to play this matchup on this stage. Right? If he has C4 in the middle platform, you will never have stage control. You're playing Snake. You never have stage control. Yeah, if he's off stage. You're playing against. Playing against. If Snake's, even if Snake's off stage, you might still not have stage control. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. That was okay. It was a good C4 by Nickroy and a bad side B by Kaiser Blue. Oh, yeah. Mixed into a uh, explosion that took Kaiser Blue's stock. Yeah, if I had, if I had like, say what this is in a word, it is very fluid gameplay coming out of Nick, right? It's, he's not doing anything, like, too... I guess it's not crazy. Yeah, it's not crazy. It's not nutty, but it's just like everything is solid. It's solid. You can't, you can't really say, "Oh, he shouldn't have done that there." No, he's getting everything done right. And what more do you really Nicker want? Nicker is doing to? everything right. Kaiser is making a couple mistakes, but they're not like it's a couple big mistakes. It's not like it's a million mistakes. It's like oh, that and that and that. He's also playing relatively fine. Right. It's just it's hard to fight Snake, especially Snake is such a like player thing. Yeah, there's a lot of some, char some characters, characters are like, you know, 150 to negative 50 matchups. But like, a Snake is a lot of just like, you have to just know how to do it as a player right. with your character. <laughs> oh, poor Falco. Oh, what are we doing? Oh, hi, Falco. <laughs> oh, it fell off. <laughs> no! <laughs> but unfortunately, he pied up. I think he might have been looking at Nick Roy while he was doing the upbeat or something, like in shock. And he messed up his angle. You know what? I can't blame him for that. 